Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, to my workshop. So in this video, I want to put together a sort of guide to all things sharpening, you know. We'll, I'll sort of walk you through what kind of stones there is and what stones you should need. Uh, and then we'll do a bit of sharpening. We'll sharpen some normal chisels, some gouge chisels and some plain irons. And I'll, I'll walk you through some of the techniques that I use. Now, when we get into woodworking, you know, sharpening is a sort of mystery. And um, we'll all buy a honing guide, and that's most definitely what you should buy and start with. Use your honing guide; they'll get your, they'll get them razor sharp. But eventually, you need to put that honing guide aside, you know, and practice actually sharpening yourself. I've become real proficient at sharpening chisels, you know. So, I just want to put across and you know tell you what I know and what I've learned through the years. And um, so, it, it's, it is a sort of art in itself, sharpening, and it can, it takes a long time. Are you practicing um, and learning the methods and techniques until you actually get it, you know? But as soon as you learn that, and as soon as you learn that method that works for you uh, and you enjoy it, you'll see it sharp and you'll keep going. Before you know it, that'll be it. The honing guide will be out the windy. Uh, if you don't know what a honing guide is, which I'm, I imagine most of you do, but I'll, I'll get into it and I'll show you everything, all right? So. so these are some of the stones that I've got. Um, this is a honing guide here. You know, they're relatively cheap. You would, uh, you know, put your your chisel in there, or your iron would go there, and most of them have got a wee guide there that will tell you how how far you want it, to, uh, you want to stick out, you know, and um, to get that right angle. Most of most of them are around about thirty degrees, twenty five degrees. When you start buying tools, um, you know, eventually you're gonna need to sharpen them. And that's they're the they're the perfect things to start with. So when it comes to stones, there there are so many different stones out there. You've got most, and, and these are everywhere. These stones, these are the stones that I started with. It's a wheat stone, you know. You need to put it in water, let it soak the water, um, and then you use um, water to cut with. And they're pretty good. The only bad thing is, is they wear out real real quick. And then you've got your your natural stones. These are these two here are natural stones. This one's like about a fifteen thousand grit. This one here is maybe about a two thousand. And then I, I've got these ones here, which are silicon carbide, and these ones are extremely wear resistant. You know, I've had these for years. These ones and they do not wear down at all. Of course, they are going to wear down, but I. And they're extremely good stones as well. You've got your, your diamond stones. Now, I, I bought these ones specifically for this video. I bought these ones on Amazon for £8. And they're, they're really, really thin. So they flex. So I put them in these wee kind of holder type things. And, you know, that keeps them straight. And uh, the diamond stones are extremely expensive. Same way, you know, your... Your top of the line stones, they are they are really, really expensive. But these wee ones here for Amazon, they cost 20 quid and they will do you for a time. Now, another one is sandpaper. I've got this uh, silicon carbide sandpaper and getting a bit of glass and sitting these down. These work amazing as well, you know. So I, I, I would just start with the 400 and then I've got 1500 here. And day two of a day for you to get a, you know, a, a mighty sharp edge. But you finish it halfway, you know, a 5000 for that mirror polish. And then the last ones are, are these ones here. And these ones are specifically made for your gouge chisels, you know, to, to get in here. Um, I guess, you know, you could use these for your flat ones as well, these, these bits as well. So... Uh, that's basically all the kind of stones that there is. I'm going to show you, uh, I've got this gouge chisel here, which I just got, and it is sharp, but it can be sharper. This thing here is completely blunt. And then we have got a plain iron, which again, this is blunt. So I'll walk you through sharpening them, the techniques that I use. Um, aye. And we'll use these things because I'm I'm kind of liking these diamond stones. 
The diamond stones are really, really good and they do not wear out. Apparently they don't wear out, but these ones, see here, you got a bit of wear here, look. Bye, man, so that's, that, that, that's mystery stones and obviously, you know, there's so much more about stones and they can talk about, but that is the basics and what you need to know. Look. And obviously a strop, I've got a strop on both of these, so after you've, after you've, you know, sharpened it up, you know, you would strop it, and again, you, you don't necessarily put it at the angle that you were sharpening, maybe just doing a wee bit more, and then you pull back, like, 10, 15 times, and essentially that just refines the edge, if you've got a bar, it'll, it'll, it'll rip that away, um, but I, I'll sort of refine the edge, heats that metal up and just refines it all the metal. So I, the difference between all these stones, well, I guess how they're classed is how they remove the swarf, you know, the metal off it. So you've got your, uh, your water stones or your oil stones uh, and then your diamond stones. So diamond, they say you don't need to use anything. You can do that dry. But I always like to put a bit of oil on it. Um, and then your your water stones, which are these way of wheat stones. And um, I'm sure that that's why I've got a couple here here that are all water stones. Whereas stones like this, these three, these are oil stones. So you put oil on them. And um, these ones here are oil stones. Look, and uh, these are a lot harder. In my experience, these are always a lot harder. Uh, you know, made a natural stone, silicon carbide, aluminium oxide. These ones are always the supreme stones, but water stones are really, really popular. The more expensive water stones, you know, that the the last a bit longer. Um, but I like the oil stones. They're they're my favourite. But just for using these the last week, but I'm starting to like them so. Do it your choice as to which you want to buy. Um, now, these ones here are really inexpensive and they do a really, really good job. So I say, well, I'm going to use these because again, I only, I only got them last week and testing them out. And so far, they've been pretty good. Look. So I always like putting my stones in that in the vice. Look. Um, and you can use these dry. But again, I always like to use uh, mineral oil. I use mineral oil when it's actually running out, look. So uh, I'll just put a bit of mineral oil down, just wet the surface here, look. Now, we'll start off with just a normal chisel. So before we actually get into just uh, hand sharpening on a rain, I want to show you uh, the honing guide. Now, if you look here, you'll see a couple of numbers. So that's uh, 30 millimeter for 30 degrees and then 40 millimetre for 25 degrees and what I've just done is just threw a couple of wee blocks together and what you would do is you would sit your your chisel in here and then if you wanted it to be 30 degrees just simply you know put it there like that and then pull it back right there and then cinch it up get it tight once we've got it set up it is as simple as it looks you know putting it in and just dragging it back it is that simple with a honing guide you, you simply cannot go wrong with a honing guide so let's get on to actual sharpening it by hand now. So at the end of the day, when it comes to sharpening, there's loads of methods. But for a beginner, you know, you you'll see people, you know, on YouTube, and they'll just be like, "Let's huddle like this." There'll be a for thirty seconds, and it'll be sharp. That's that's years and years of doing that, and you know they've become so proficient through muscle memory. You know, the best way that I can tell you to do it, you know, is to sort of grab it like a pencil. Another reason why you put some lubricant down. So you like grab it and then you push down until you see that liquid coming through it. 
So you know that you're just touching the apex. You just push it up just a narrow teeny bit. And uh, use both of your horns like this. You just pull back. Again, come up till you see it. Pull back. This is the best method for a beginner. So you pull back up, pull down, till you see the liquid coming through, then up again a wee bit. And you keep doing that, and just feeling. And you can see that we're, we're just touching the tap here like that, and it's just still, still blunt. Right, so you just do this for a wee bit, come back and forward feeling it. Do the back a wee bit. I'll rotate for doing the back, doing the front. Just keep doing that. Grab it like a pencil. It might be different for you just till you're comfy. You know, and you get that position and just lock your wrists. And you say, I'm not actually, I, I'm not actually pulling it back with my arms. I'm pulling back with my legs. So I'm getting that position, pulling back with my legs. So my whole body's moving, but my wrists and my elbows, my shoulders are locked. Another good way, but as well, is coming, I'm facing this way on it now. Again, it's finding that way, finding that hang me, right, and locking your horns. Just small, small circular motions. So they're, they're two really good methods for a beginner. And we're getting a wee edge on that. Look. But I'll keep that, see, see it's all going black, that's all the metal. And I'll keep that there because that acts like an abrasive. Look. You just find the, find the way that fits, that fits you and feels right and holding this here. Well, that's it. No, I've spent about what two or three minutes there, and you can see that we've took the full bevel down, and it's it's no razor sharp, but it's got an edge in it enough to cut wood. See? So I'm going to switch here to the twelve hundred now. We've got a mineral oil. And again, just find that right position using both your horns. You know what? The, the, the comfy position for you might be different for this, but you know, essentially what I'm doing is I'm just I'm sort of pushing down and with my thumb at the back, I'm sort of pushing up. And then with this, I'm sort of locking it in, like, in place. Now, obviously the geometry when it comes to a chisel, you're talking around about 30 degrees, but see if you've got a big nick or something like that, let's say you get a big nick, um, you're not wanting to, you know, it could take a lot of sharpening to get that full bevel down, so you might want to create a secondary bevel, and a lot of the time I'll do that in my chisels, you'll see my chisel's got a, a bevel, and then there's another wee secondary bevel like that, you know, Sometimes, most of the time, that can that can be the way forward, look. So again, if I was to do that, but I would find my my position, and then I would just simply lift it up a wee teeny bit more. So find that and lift it a wee teeny bit more. And you can sort of see there, you see the little secondary bevel, look. You see this bit, and then... So I put a secondary bevel in there, and that's uh, it's getting there, it's getting there. But we want to spend just a wee bit more time because, as I said, this was uh, completely blunt. Right, I can see the wee bow there. Look. It's uh, sharp enough to. I'm going to. 
I'm just going to put my wee jade stone on this <coughs> just to further refine it and then we can use the straw mm -hmm. there we go and we'll put the straw on and I've got a green polish here which is a super fine we're just going to charge it so we to find our angle and then just, I'll just come down just a wee bit more and then push down your weight on it and then locking it in your body no change in the position just go back and forward 10-15 times I mean you can do you can do the back if you want but there we go you can always tell something sharp look don't know if you can hear that look That's when you know a blade's sharp. You also look at it. I've still got that wee burr on it. Look. We'll put a bit of wood down and I'll show you. So I just with your... And what I do is I'll just keep it flat. And you raise it ever so slightly. And don't don't push any weight into it. Look, just to see if it's sharp enough. You know, just, just why. Hold it flat and just lift it up like poof. Not even a ball here, look. <laughs> and then just push it across. And if it does that, then that's sharp enough for maced work when it comes to woodworking, you know? Maced work when it comes to woodworking. And we've got a wee bit of hardwoods here as well. couple of minutes work just with the right method and technique you can get your your chisel sharp so we'll move on to well, it's the same way i guess i don't really need to show you this way it's the exact same um it's the exact same way the plane iron but sometimes you know a plane iron is it's, a, it's like convex let's get this off and we'll just put our 600 on to start with so we can look and yeah you know, this is it's just got them at the ends but it's just coming up you see what i'm doing now so i'm sort of leaning to the left whereas it's touching at the left but it's no here and i'm going down and i'm as i'm going down i'm i'm changing so rather than pushing for the left i'm pushing for the right so as I'm going down, I'll pull it and I'll change and I'll start pushing to the right. And again, I'm locked in here with my wrist and I'm using my legs and my body. And you can even use this wee bit here, you know, just find the right way to hold it. You know, like, I'll usually just hold it like this. And it's just pushing against my palm there and I've got my finger and my thumb around it and then I'll use my my fingers here to push down. Essentially it's locked in like that look. Like. Uh, just find my angle, push to the left, come back, push to the right, push to the right, left, middle, right, left, middle, right. And by just continuously doing that, there's a minute there. Got it already. And it's like one's way, one's that I've got merry a convex one. I would just focus on, you know, because the only bit that's really going to be touching the wood is the centre bit here, you know, so I would just focus on the centre. Like, So that's pretty much it for that one. Look. Get a wee bit of burr on this side. Look. Again, just move to your finer one and then your strop. Look. So, sharpening the infamous gouge chisel. These these can be more difficult. For me, I, I don't necessarily focus so much on the inside bit. You know, I don't. If 
if it is dirty or you see, you know, I, I won't really focus on this bit that much, just the bevel part, but you can always just, don't push it into it, like, just put it back, and just a couple of times man, you know, like, maybe spend a minute, like 30 seconds, I won't spend any more time than that, so for this, again, you're sort of, Finding your bevel, find your angle, start at the left here, find my angle, and then as I'm pulling down, I'm just going to turn it, but I'm just locking it with my wrist at my body, so I'll just widen it so you can see here, so I've locked it in my body here, find my angle, pushing down with my fingers here, alright, and it's show you so I find my angle here and I'm just going to pull back with my body and turn now as I said these ones are a bit more difficult that's why you see people with machines in that because they are really difficult to sharpen what it's a dying art, as they say. Just continue to do that. And we can see that. And just continue this. Until you, until you hear a bit of scraping. And you know, I can feel a wee burr at the back there. But see, see the burr, but see once you start using it, that first, uh, that first pass through a bit of wood, that burr will snap off. Look. So I would not really worry about the burr. I see a lot of people, you know, focusing on getting rid of that burr, getting rid of that burr. Mm. I like to, I, I, the burr disappears, you know, as soon as you take that first pass. So, so I'm just moving up to the 1200 and I'm just going to continue. Just spend a wee bit of time. These are the methods that I found worked the best when I was first learning to do it, you know. I can do it, like, you know, I, I, I can do it with just moving my hands, you know, but I'm just, I'm trying to show you the best methods, look. Um, just spend, spend a wee bit of time, 10 minutes every day doing it, you know, look. So we'll, we'll give us a wee strop now. Again, I'm just pushing down and I'm turning as I'm moving. I'm pretty happy with that. Look. eBay is certainly a friend when it comes to all this stuff. There is an abundance of people selling these kind of, you know, tools like, I mean, your Ward, your Matheson. Honestly, there's so many amazing uh, tools out there that are going for pennies, look. So let's say... Uh, Let's just get um, a wee bit in here. There we go. And I'm pretty happy with that. Look, it's sharp enough. Sharp enough to do what has to be done. Nice. Let's view that ball there, that ball's no there. See, the wood, the wood will take the bar off. Yeah, I've, I've seen people using wood itself as a strop, you know? Because wood will burnish the metal. Look. I really made yeah. this, this video about sharpening your chisels and your plain iron. You know, sharpening knives uh, is a completely different ball game, I think. 
um, because I'm no I'm no very good at sharpening the knife. Like, you know, I can usually get like one bit like one bit sharp or something, and another bit I'll leave blunt. And that is just all because you know you're you're having to hold it at that angle whilst turning it as well. You know, look, like, it's always fighting they're difficult. They, that's difficult, but I guess it's it's the same principle. You know, it's the same principle of fo uh, following you know a certain method, a certain technique. Um, I it's super super important to have sharp chisels, sharp plane irons, like because when they're no sharp, it's just it's it's no fun, you know, to work with when your when your chisel is blunt. No fun when your plane is blunt. So it is an important part of woodworking to know how to sharpen your aim tool. So there we go, guys. Just a couple of minutes, and they're sharp enough to use, you know, and they will certainly work for all areas of woodworking. And I'm happy with them, you know. This is one that I did plan to use. That is there in my rack there, look. This one is one that I did just use when I'm wanting to scrape things, but not necessarily, you know, dig into the wood and stuff, look. Um, but I definitely go on eBay and, you know, type in sharpening stones and just pick up yourself some, some old ones. Um, the, these ones here that I got that you see in this uh, this red box here, Hilka. Um, you'll find these on eBay for really cheap. And these are stones that were made back in the 70s and 80s, you know. So, and I see this side here. It's got, I mean, look, it's like, it's like perfectly smooth and flat. Whereas you look at the back here, it's got a couple of hits at it, you know. So, I don't know if... What I've learned myself is that see like really good chisels, like so chisels that were made like back in the seventies and eighties, your you know, your Ward, your Masson, um your your Marple, um the metals have got a lot higher carbon content. So it can take a lot more work to get them sharpened. So my advice would be to, you know, buy cheap chisels. Um, and practice on cheap chisels because the cheap chisels, the metals are they're just inferior and you can grind them down a lot, lot quicker. So buy some of the kind of cheaper uh, chisels and practice on the ones. The most of the time people are just going to sharpen their chisels like this. So um, I, I just, just practice, practice, practice. The more practice that you get with it, the better that your brain will subconsciously remember to hold it that way and to push in this direction. So. I am gonna hope that this video has been a help for you guys, alright? Um I definitely just practice, practice, practice. That's all you need to do. Knowing just a couple of methods and holding it a certain way, and, you know, pushing it a certain way, moving it in a certain way, like just daily things just to help you when you're sharpening. So take it easy guys, I'll see you in the next project, alright? God bless. And build some build some guys. <laughs>